The stone that builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the door, day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The second reading for today is found in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. Now I remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which you also stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have become to believe in vain. For I handed on to you of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Caiaphas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am at the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. By the grace of God, I am, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that was in me. Rather than it was I or they, so we proclaim, so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 16th chapter. Please rise. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go ahead, go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place that they have laid him. But go and tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. And there you will see him just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb. For terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone. For they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Are there children that would like to come up for a children's sermon? You don't have to if you don't want to, but it's easier for me to talk to you if you're up front. You can sit up here and kind of spread out by family if that's okay. Okay, you can sit over here in this corner right here. How does that sound? All right. Today is a special day. It's Easter. And Easter is the day that we remember that Jesus rose from the dead. Is that a good thing? Is that a real good thing? Yes, it is. It's a really good thing. And so the word that we say on Easter is Alleluia. Can you say Alleluia? Okay, we'll work on that. Um, If we had had church on the last Sunday of Epiphany, which was back in February, there's a church tradition that was, when you're in the season before we have, uh, before Easter, you're thinking about why Jesus had to die on the cross for us, and you're not allowed to say that word, Alleluia, any time during any worship services. We just take it right out of the worship services. And in fact, what, what I would have done if we would have had worship services here on, on that last day before we started the season of Lent is I would have had this word on a poster and I would have had you hide it somewhere in the church. And then on today, you would go get it because this is the day that we bring back that word because Alleluia means I'm happy. Praise God. And we say that because, you know, this is the day that God rose Jesus from the dead. So this is the day that we say, Alleluia. Now, I want to hear you say the word Alleluia and say it like you're excited. One, 
two, three. You don't sound excited. <laughs> okay, let's try it again. One, two, three. Not excited enough. This is a big day. We're happy. Jesus rose from the dead. One, see, I'm talking louder than you are. One, two, three. Hallelujah. That's good. That's good. Now, today is on Easter. You know, we bring that word back. How many times do you think you're going to say the word hallelujah during the service? Take a guess. Take a guess. Any guesses? 16? 65 is too much. There's 16 in one song. So you are going to say the word alleluia or sing it 39 times today. Isn't that neat? Do you know how many times the choir is singing that word when you, and today when, when you were listening to them? 22. So that means it's been 61 times that we are saying or singing the word Alleluia. How many times do you think I've said it already, just in this children's sermon? 14, you're right. So we're up to, we're up to 14 plus 60, 61. We're up to 75 times that we're saying Alleluia. That's 76. So, Alleluia 77 is the, day, is the word of the day, and we say that in thanksgiving and to praise God for Jesus raising Jesus, for, for God raising Jesus for the dead. Can you say it one more time, nice and loud and nice, exci nice and excitedly? Alleluia. That's 79. Good. Let's have a word of prayer. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks for all your many blessings. We give you thanks for the gift of Easter and the day that Jesus rose from the dead. And we all say, Alleluia. Amen. We're now up to 80. Okay, you can go, go back to your seats now. Have a wonderful Easter. Grace be unto you in peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, when we read that Easter gospel lesson, if you, if you listen to it closely, it's kind of unsettling. You know, we believe Mark is the uh, earliest of the gospel writers. And did you notice how the story ends? The women hear the good news that Jesus has risen from the dead, but they don't see the risen Jesus, and they simply run away terrified. And bing, bada, boom, story's over. That's the way Mark wrote his gospel. They hear the good news, but the women run away terrified. Now, as, as the later gospel writers went on, they decided to include the, uh, stories of, of people meeting the risen Jesus. You know, Matthew and John have the story of the we, uh, women meeting the risen Jesus on the way to see the disciples. Luke records how Jesus Road, uh, appeared to two followers on the road to Emmaus. John tells us the story how Jesus appeared to Mary Magdalene 
and the 12 disciples on that Easter evening. And even if you look in your Bible later on, people felt uncomfortable with, with the way that, that Mark ended his gospel. So they, they added endings where Jesus, they see Jesus and, and they see the risen Jesus and they tell the disciples. But if you look at the way Mark ends it, the way he wrote it, it's simply the announcement of the resurrection and the women go away frightened. You know, I think that's intentional that Mark cuts it off right there. See, for the first people that were hearing the, the good news that Mark was giving them 30 years later, they didn't have the benefit of seeing the risen Jesus. They were kind of like the women. They could only hear the good news and then believe. The same goes for us as well. You know, we gather together this morning and we hear the triumphant news of Easter and we take Easter on faith. You know, there's other parts of the Gospel of Mark story of Easter that is kind of unsettling. The message to the women is to tell the disciples to return to Galilee, and there in Galilee, he will meet them. So there, go to Galilee, back home, and there at home, Jesus will meet them. Go back home, because there is where you will find the risen Jesus. If you think about it, it might have been more comfortable to meet Jesus inside the, inside the tomb or someplace in Jerusalem. It'd be nice to meet Jesus in a nice, safe place. But no, the instruction of the angel is to go back to their homes in Galilee. Go back to your families. Go back to where you live your everyday life. And you will find the risen Lord there. What Mark is trying to tell people is that the good news of the resurrection is not contained within four walls. The good news of the resurrection is found in our daily life. We find the good news of, G of the risen Jesus in our homes and in our families, at play, at school, at work, in the community. If you will meet our risen Lord, you'll meet him not here, but truly out there. Another thing that the angel says is, do not be afraid. You know, the world can be a, a very scary place. You know, there are some people in the congregation that are still not comfortable coming to, to worship, and that's okay. We deal with health problems, our own and those that we care for. We say goodbye to loved ones and friends. We deal with our own failures and disappointments and the failures and disappointments of those around us. And the risen Jesus meets us right there in our own struggles in the day-to-day -day real world. You see, Jesus knew what it was like to lose a friend a good friend, someone he loved. Lazarus, whom the Bible says he loved, died. And the shortest verse of the Bible is that two words, Jesus wept. He knows what it means to suffer. 
He suffered on the cross. He knows what, it's, what it means to be frightened. He was frightened in the Garden of Gethsemane. He knows disappointment and failure as his disciples denied him and fled in his greatest hour, a greatest hour of need. You see, the risen Jesus walks with us in our daily struggles. But even more, he conquered death and suffering and failure, and he gives us the power to conquer those things as well. Do not be afraid, the angel says. The angel also says, see where they laid him. You know, we find Jesus' presence all around us. We find Jesus as we serve others in need. We find Jesus as close as the hug of a friend, an open Bible, a whispered prayer. We see Jesus active in the lives around us. We see prayers answered, lives touched, hands reaching out to the poor and the needy. Good news, good news preached to the downtrodden and strength and courage given to those who are struggling. The angel also says, go and tell his followers. The followers of Jesus are called to go and tell, not like the women as the story ends, but to go and tell the story of the risen Jesus not necessarily in far off places, but you notice he says, go back to your communities. He says, go and tell right in your own communities, among your family and your friends, among neighbors and others around you. The angel tells us that our mission field is not necessarily in a far off place. We meet the risen Jesus, and he sends us right back to where we came from and tells us to go and tell. Max Licato has a, a book that I like. It's entitled Fearless. The final chapter of the book was, is entitled this, The Fear of Letting God Out of the Box. You know, that title is so meaningful to me. I think all of us would like to keep the risen Jesus tucked away in a safe place in our lives. But Jesus refuses to stay tucked away in a, in a safe place. The good news of Jesus is not going to stay there. The risen Jesus is going to meet us in our everyday life. The risen Jesus is going to walk with us and give us courage and strength to meet the challenges of this life. We are going to see his presence in our day-to-day -day life. And we're called to go and tell not just somewhere else, but even perhaps in the circles closest to us. If you think about it, what Mark is saying is that Jesus has been let out of the box. Jesus has been let loose in our lives. Perhaps that's why Mark does not record a single appearance of the risen Jesus, because the risen Jesus is not going to be associated with a single place. He's out of the box. He's been let loose in the lives of his believers. He has been let loose in our lives. 
Alleluia. Christ is risen indeed. Amen. That's 81. Would you rise and join me as we confess our faith in the form of the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer with steadfast love. Praise to you for your power revealed in the resurrection. Fill your church with the power of your love that is stronger than death. Send us to tell the good news wherever death holds sway. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Praise to you for your life at work in the resurrection. Fill all of creation with your life. Bring it to blossom and flourish. Use it to remind us of your persistent grace. Cultivate our care for what you have made. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Praise to you for the peace made possible in the resurrection. Fill the nations with your peace. Draw together people of all nations and language. 
reveal new possibilities and inspire new beginnings. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Praise to you for the hope of the resurrection. Fill all in need with hope, those who are afraid or confused, those who are sick or suffering, those who are dying, and those who grieve, especially the Moser and Canals family. Assure them of the, your promises, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Praise to you for the joy of your resurrection. Fill this assembly with joy as we are called your beloved in baptism. Multiply that joy so that we share it at home, at work, and in our community. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Praise to you for your faithfulness revealed in the resurrection. Fill us with the trust that we join with all who have gone before us in proclaiming your mercy endures forever. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In hope of new life in Christ, we praise our prayers, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now may the peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us greet each other with what my wife would call the holy wave, or maybe the holy elbow bump. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should, at all times and all places, give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Son, Jesus Christ the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and, and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. 
Your mercy is everlasting, and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. O God of resurrection and new life, Pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast and grace our table with your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth burning with justice and peace and love. And with all your holy ones of every time and every place, with the earth and sea and all its creatures, with the sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity, one God, now and forever. Amen. Would you join me in our Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This is the body of Christ given for you. Please partake at this time. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Please partake at this time.
And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Wellspring of joy, through this meal you have put gladness in our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us. Send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And may our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus. And may the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace and share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Thank you.